What's up guys, Graham here. If you left a comment in the comment section of the last weekend video, then you are entered into the giveaway of three wrecks. We're giving away three separate wrecks. And if you're one of the people that have used my referral link in the description below my videos, then you are entered in to win 10 times that amount if you're one of the winners. So the winners of those wrecks are BAM! Right there. Congratulations. We will be sending your Rex to you just shortly. If you guys read the description below the videos, you know that donations spur giveaways. So, we've had a couple of donations this week and yeah, it's going to spur a couple of giveaways. We had a $25 donation from Jeremy and he's been donating $25 every month. And of course, a $25 donation spurs a giveaway of a Typhoon edition of the new expansion. Thank you so much, Jeremy, for supporting the channel I cannot thank you enough and then we had another donation from John which he donated $20 so that is awesome man I cannot thank you enough and since John donated that much money of course that's gonna be another Rex giveaway thank you so much Jeremy and John I really really appreciate it so if you guys would like to be entered into the giveaway of a typhoon edition and a Rex giveaway and mind you if you are one of the people that have used my referral link in the description below to make your rift account then if you win the Rex giveaway, then you will be earning 10 times that amount of Rex. So if you'd like to be entered into that giveaway, leave your name and server in the comment section below this video and we will be doing a drawing to see who the winners are in the next weekend video. Best of luck everyone. What's up guys, Graham here. Today we're going to go over the recent 3.2 patch. And a lot of you guys have already read over the patch notes and all that, but a lot of times people don't understand exactly what the patch notes are saying. And they also like to see other people's point of view. So I'm going to give you Graham's point of view on 3.2. The 3.2 patch had almost everything to do with PvE or else cosmetic stuff and almost nothing to do with PvP altogether except for a system that we're going to get into which does not have much to do with PvP at all. They revamped the instant adventures altogether. They changed it to where there's extra rewards which is nice. They also made it to where people can get kicked out if they're AFK and the rewards will be reduced if they're not participating in the instant adventures very much. The main good thing about this is is that they are increasing the rewards to where it's going to be stuff like notoriety, uh, rewards to where if you complete instant adventures you get tokens that you can turn in for notoriety which will allow you to buy other things which can help you in PvE or PvP because a lot of times you need the notoriety in order to buy items. The part that they put in that's going to kick AFK players that aren't participating in the instant adventures, it's really not even needed and it's more of a popular demand thing because whenever somebody was AFK in a instant adventure, it was not affecting you whatsoever. It did not slow you down in your progression. It didn't speed you up, which annoyed a lot of players because they didn't like somebody getting the rewards that wasn't participating. But yet, them not doing the instant adventure was not affecting the other players. So that just annoyed players and they started demanding for an AFK kick system. So Tron went ahead and pleased those players. Even though it's not needed whatsoever, it's something that people wanted so they went ahead and stuck in anyway. Overall the instant adventure changes are good but the only thing that's really important is the part where they made it to where you can get notoriety from instant adventures because getting notoriety is generally pretty difficult especially for PVPers and all that and you need the notoriety in order to get the items, the runes, all that to in, in order to increase your effectiveness in PVP so yeah, we're, we're going to have to sit through some instant adventures in order to get our notoriety. A huge crowd pleaser of a system was put in, which is the change of the wardrobe. And that is where you can actually acquire an item and it will save it to your profile. And you can throw the item away afterwards. And then from then on, you can transmog your sword or armor to look like that item that you had before. No more cluttering up your banks, no more cluttering up your bags. You can get the items, throw them away, and they are saved into your profile. That means people like me no longer have to buy the baubles in order to make my sword look like a particular sword that I had in the past. 
and we get to do it for free anytime we want from now on as long as we have owned that weapon before. This also means you no longer have to buy dies and use them up and then have to rebuy them all the time. They will actually be saved into your wardrobe profile and you can unlock all the dies if you want to. This is such a huge change because people love the wardrobe systems usually. They love making their characters look in particular ways and now they'll be able to save those profiles and change them around between specs. Take for instance if I'm running around in a Tempest spec and I like the lightning look and I have a particular mount that has the bluish hue to it and then I can have this wardrobe set that will match the all electric with the Tempest build. This is a huge crowd pleaser of a change and Tryon did an excellent job with this one. For those of you that are huge into the Nightmare Rifts, they have added a level six of the Nightmare Rifts. So yeah, that's gonna be a whole new level of difficulty with all new achievements and unlocks and you guys can go out there and grind away at your Nightmare Rifts if you like. I never was big on the Nightmare Rifts, which made me fall behind on the notoriety stuff. But I know a lot of you guys find it as a good challenge, so go out there and buy your level 6 lures, open them up, and watch all the people that are used to level 1 lures uh, get owned up by the Nightmare Tide. Another thing that I thought was really good whenever I read about it, but yet once I participated in it, I did not like it at all, was the onslaughts. They have it to where now you defend uh, the bases like they always have in the past, and it's a new weekly that you can get, so I was thinking more marks, the best. Better. yeah these onslaughts are pretty easy but this one is absolutely terrible the weekly is to defeat 300 invasions and defeat 15 of the bosses basically how it works is you have to search around for a particular spot that is actually active with the onslaught which means that you're going from place to place to place and having to jump shard to shard to shard and then you finally find one and you have to defeat all the initial enemies and then you boost up all the cannons and healing pods and all that. Well then a lot of other players start coming into the area and start joining in which you would think is a good thing right? No that is a bad thing because what happens is all these invasions start coming in and they are very very slow but yet whenever they come in they come in at multiple points like at each end of the area. So one comes in you go over there to tag that invasion and mind you, you do not want to DPS it because that will make everybody else not be able to tag it in time to get the credit. Well, then you got to run all the way to the opposite end and try to tag that other side before it gets DPS down, which means that you do not get to tag everything and you lose out on the credit. But even if you do get to tag everything, it moves so slow that you're just standing around bored out of your mind waiting for these invasions. And then after about, whatever, 30 minutes of these slow, slow invasions, all of a sudden a boss comes at the end which has almost no HP at all, so you've got to pray that you got to tag it before it gets killed. If you do not get to tag it, that means that entire time that you spent there is wasted because you are going to be able to do the invasions way before you're going to complete the boss kills that you need. So what seemed like a really cool system is actually terrible in effect right now. So far I'm halfway through the weekly and I'm thinking about deleting it because I do not want to go through this anymore and I definitely do not want to do it again next week. Hopefully they change it around and make it a little more enjoyable and not such a bad system like it is right now. But if you enjoy that kind of thing that you're just looking to burn some time and get a weekly done, then feel free to do it. But yeah, bring, bring your mobile phone so you can play some Clash of Clans or something while you wait. A big addition to 3.2 is the Return to Hammernail, which is a classic raid that has been revamped into a level 65 raid that a lot of people are struggling to take down right now. When I looked at the charts to see who all has downed the bosses so far with the guilds that get the world first and all that, it looked like about half of the content has already been down, so that's rather fast but there's still half of it to go so you never know what will cause them to struggle. Good luck to everybody that's trying to get world first and hopefully some of you guys get it on farm pretty soon and invite the old Grim so he can actually get some raid gear. There's been a couple of changes that have happened to the mage class that I think we need to go over a little bit. One is that they did several changes to the harbinger tree that looks like it's a significant buff to it although I have not really played harbinger too much so I'm not too sure how much this will affect the class, 
but it looks like a step in the right direction because Harbinger really needs some love and it's always been struggling except for a doling soul. Another thing that's kind of interesting is they gave Pyromancer a little bit of love once again. Although it's a very small buff, it's still interesting that they're willing to buff up a spec that is known for being able to burst people down in a heartbeat. But maybe it needed it, who am I to say? I don't play Pyromancer too much, but I do know they are a big threat to me whenever I see them casting on me. The last thing we're going to talk about is the actual change to PvP, which is the ELO system. Now basically this is a scoring that they give you based on how many wins you get in Warfronts and how many losses you have. As you can see, since this change went in, I've went into eight Warfronts so far. I've won seven of them, I've lost one which makes my score kind of not all that high. I guess in order to raise the score quite a bit, you have to do a lot of war fronts and not just have a really good ratio because I noticed that every time I got a win, it didn't seem like my score went up all that much. Uh, I've heard of people being in the 4,000s. Uh, I never actually seen it, but it's something that people are saying that they have achieved. That's probably people that run with a pre-made every time, which I am almost 99% of the time running solo. So I have a pretty good win rate compared to what I'm going up against, I guess. Now the big question is, is this ELO system going to have any impact on PvP at all? The answer right now is absolutely not because nobody can see your ELO rating. Even if they could, it wouldn't matter too much because you might get paired up with a lot of players that are not very good at PvP and bring you down, such as if you're a solo queue like I am, whenever you get into a warfront and the team that you're on is just bound and determined to lose, there isn't too much that I can do in order to sway the victory in our favor. So it's not going to be something that people are going to judge you on too much. But even if they wanted to judge you on the ELO system, they cannot see it, so it's not something that's going to affect you at all. It seems like a little bit of a cool change because you now can see your rating, so to say. But overall, it's absolutely pointless for the most part because it's not going to affect PvP at all, and this is not a change that's in the benefit of us whatsoever. And the final change I'm going to talk about is all the T1 bosses have been nerfed. So for those of you that enjoy the rating but have always struggled through the T1 content, now is your chance to down it all because they have all become weaker and their damage has been reduced quite a bit. I know a lot of people have really struggled with the first boss in the Ren of Fate, which is Ungalok, and now he's been nerfed, so hopefully you guys can down him and get to the lot easier bosses that's along the way. That wraps up this review of 3.2 and all of Grimm's thoughts on it. My final review of it all is basically that PvE Raiders have gotten new content that they'll probably be happy with in that they can work on the T2 gear now, but they may not be happy in that it is a rehashing of the old stuff. And I know a lot of times people get really annoyed whenever it's not actual new content and it's just a remake of the old stuff. Also, casuals have gotten a lot of new stuff added to where they can do the wardrobes, they can do the uh, instant adventures, there's new crafting stuff, there's a lot of things that casuals can do now and really enjoy the game even more than they have in the past. On the opposite end of the spectrum is the PvPers that pretty much got nothing with 3.2. The only thing that was added for PvPers was the ELO system, which is very unsatisfying, so to say. It's really just a fluff system and nothing that's going to impact PvP whatsoever, and we really lost out on 3.2, put it that way. But overall, it's a decent patch as long as you're playing some of the other aspects of the game besides PvP. I hope you guys enjoyed the review of 3.2, and as usual, guys, my name is Grim, and I'll see you next time.